All right, good afternoon, everybody. Wall Street Jesus here. I actually forgot there was a webinar. I don't even think I tweeted out the link on my Twitter. I lost track of the days here being uh, casino was closed yesterday. Uh, but uh, some interesting stuff to go over, so I'm glad we have one. All right, and um, hold on a second. Let me pull up. I have private Twitter on here. So, Oh, I have it here. Okay. All right, we got um, an interesting setup here in the market. And, you know, it, it could end up turning into something really exciting. Uh, there is that possibility. But right now, it is what it is, and we'll talk about that um, a little bit. All right, last time we had this webinar, if you remember, uh, we were talking about, in simple English, the chase uh, that we were likely to see. And uh, you guys probably saw on my personal Twitter an idea of what I'm talking about. I tweeted out a couple of times. Let me see what's the quickest I could grab here. Uh, so you saw me tweet out. Uh, again, this is not just members only, so that's why... Uh, I'm using stuff on my personal Twitter here, but you have seen me post stuff like this, all right? And in simple English, uh, what this stuff has been telling us is that the hedge funds obviously have been underperforming, okay? Uh, but more importantly, what they've been doing is they've been selling into this rally throughout you know, the second half of the summer up until now. Okay, that's what kind of we were talking about, if you remember, on the last webinar. And what happens is you get where the hedge funds are underperforming the hot names and a lot of the indices. Okay, and when that stuff um, tends to happen, what, what tends to happen off that stuff is as prices, whether it's indices or certain names start to really get away from them and continue to push higher and they don't have any exposure they have to chase okay they have to chase so in other words they get cute all right we can afford to do that right we can get cute we try to time the market we try to sell into strength we hope for a pullback looking for a better entry if we're wrong on making that move it's okay, right? We'll just be patient and, you know, you wait for a better setup or whatever the case may be. It's up to you. You don't have anybody to answer to. If you're managing money, all right, if you're a fund, it's easier said than done, okay? Because now you're underperforming. And if you don't want to lose client money, you have to show these names on your books, okay? They got to play catch up in a sense. And that's what we're seeing. Like if your jaws drop it to the ground right now, uh, when you see performance like an AMD square, which is just nuts, okay? When you see stuff like this, that's what's going on, right? We talk about time and time again, the smart money is not building positions chasing up here, right, by choice. When the hedge funds have to do this, they're almost forced to do it. All right. And we're seeing the opposite play out, too, in other things. We're seeing we were talking about that today a little bit in the room. We're seeing almost like forced selling into some of the stuff that's been underperforming. All right. So that's why you're seeing a lot of these casino stocks, gambling stocks, anything EEM related, China related continue to basically you see them down every single day or any rally they find a way to they find a way to get get into the green it lasts a day or two and then the selling just pounces them on the head all right so and it's it's kind of a weird situation because normally you won't see that big discrepancy that big divergence between the two all right you'll get outperformance but a lot of time it's market related. Okay, I give an example. 
in January of last year, the blow off rally. Okay, in January. Maybe I could be wrong, but I don't remember there being that big of a disparity between different sectors of the market back then. All right, you had, you know, Fang and some of the tech names, software names that were strong, uh, but you also had like transportation that was strong. You had other things. It was it was a broader chase, if that makes any sense. Okay, where this so far, so far has been, they're chasing performing, performance in these hot growth, the majority of them tech related names. Okay, you know, and a lot of them, a lot of these names aren't even spoken about that much. We were making that point with like Square. Nobody talks about this stock and it's up literally every day. And now people are starting to talk about it a bit. Uh, you have names, you know, like that Grub that's been just a machine. Um, Etsy. Okay. Well, come on. Etsy, GoDaddy. You know, names like these. Now that um, SFIX all of a sudden is catching an absurd amount of flow up here. All right? So... And so that's what's going on right now. If you're scratching your head wondering why these things go up every day, yeah, of course, they likely have the growth. They have the fundamentals. They had that already. That's why these things were strong to begin with. But now you have hedge funds are chasing performance. Okay. And Frank, you had a question before we started um, on a name like PAGS, right? Saying, how is it, why is this thing so volatile? You know, it was up nice the other day. Gives that back down today. And the reason being is this name is tied to Brazil. Okay. So anything with those ties, just like we're seeing this chase going on in the hot software tech sectors. Okay. And some other things we're getting the total opposite in like emerging markets, Brazil. Look at this. Look at this Brazil ETF, EWZ. All right, so every time there's that vicious heavy selling in EWZ, you're likely going to see it take down PAGs with it. Now, that probably shouldn't be the case, but when you're in this type of environment like we're in right now, it is what it is, okay? Ultimately, it's likely going to create some fantastic opportunities and probably reward the people who can piece in or leg into some positions with time from these levels. Okay. Could be early, could be going lower. We've been saying that for a while, but ultimately when you see this forced selling and forced buying on the chase on the other side, when that reverses course, when that flip flops, that's where some great opportunities come about. All right. And, you know, anybody who asked me a question about the gambling names and all that stuff. Yeah. I mean, I, if it was as easy as us buying it and that being the bottom and never going lower, you know, obviously it's not that easy when you're buying, selling like this, you know, so you got to take, you got to have the impression that I'm willing to be early um, look, we go over this, you know, it's not like a broken record. You, you guys know what I'm talking about. Okay. But the blueprint, if you're looking to buy or some flow that you're impressed with in these names, you got to look back. If you remember what happened to retail, remember what happened in the retail sector. Okay. Remember, it didn't matter who the hell you were. If you had ties to retail at that given time, you were getting hit over the head, okay? You come out with good news or somebody got upgraded, the stock would pop that day, maybe a follow through the next day, and then what happened? Whoosh. Heavy selling would come in and the stock would go right back down to lows and then some, all right? And then what happened? Over time, take a peek at where we are now in retail, all right? And the names that, shouldn't have been hit as hard, you know, are performing well is another statement, okay? 
So if you were paying attention to the flow at that time and you were willing to put in the time and give your position some some leeway, right? Went out further in time, pieced in, the reward would have been worth it. All right. Otherwise, it, it's not even worth looking at these things. That's why I say, you know, if you're looking to swing these things for a couple of weeks, you better be quick and take that profit off the table. Otherwise, it's not worth it. It's not worth looking at these names for that reason. The selling's just the selling pressure is too strong right now. And it's evident in the price action. We see it continuously. All right. And so that's what I that's what I think we have to look forward to okay because eventually the music is going to stop in these things all right and, and i've been getting the question like i know when the music's going to stop of course i don't but what i've seen in my experience is what i do with it when this you see the the, the hedge fund net exposure when that starts to react when you start to see this showing that hedge funds have up their exposure. And for the most part, what usually happens, you don't get this drip higher, you get a sharp reaction higher in net exposure. All right, and that's what we're seeing right now. We're seeing it. In the flow, we're seeing it. You know, that's why they're, you know, rushing into a Roku on the first dip. Or Square, we saw, you know, four or five opening sweeps today in Square, you know, and, and so, somebody's asking me the question, why, how are they sweeping square up here? That's that's why and how. You know, they're looking for some exposure the quickest way possible. All right. And listen, you throw in the the machines, the algos, the programs out there, out there, and it just magnifies everything we're talking about. You could times it by 20. You know, maybe uh, a few years ago, it was a gradual chase or a gradual shift. The word gradual, throw it out of your vocabulary. It doesn't happen anymore. It doesn't happen. Again, retail was the most recent example. If you remember, Amazon was going to put everybody out of business. Anytime there was a hint of Amazon coming into some end of retail, those stocks would get hammered. I remember Ulta hammered you know costco remember costco they were going to put costco out of business did it make any sense probably not but the stock got hammered all right so i'm just painting the picture giving you an example it's a lot easier said than done to say oh, you know what i'm going to buy a win down here because it's down so much and expect that you're going to nail the lows on this thing. Don't expect it. If you're lucky enough and you do, fantastic. But don't expect it. And, and these guys, we're seeing it again in the flow. They don't expect it. Look at the size in these names, where they're going. Today, we saw a win, get some size again, a call spread. What was it? April, June of next year? So if they aren't relying on themselves doing it, there's no reason we should, all right? So that's the interesting dynamic we got going on here, all right? The reason why it kind of excites me, I thought initially it might happen, and, you know, that was just a gut or a hunch feeling. I was hoping for it. I was hoping that they would come into these names. Okay, these are the chase names. And eventually the flow would filter out and spill into some of the laggards. Okay, that could still happen. But what's going on is they're selling the laggards. Okay, that's the only thing that takes away from this chase a little bit. They're still selling in the laggards. As, as opposed to... If these laggards were holding up, right, maybe even, you know, pushing, pushing to the upside a little bit, and you still had, you know, the, the pace in, in these hot names. 
All right, so that's what I'm saying. If you got to understand, if you want to trade, right? If I, we, we spoke about this last uh, webinar as well. If I want that quick trade, swing, day trade, whatever the case may be, let's say I'm playing the gaming sector, right? I'm looking more towards a take two than I would be looking at an EA or an ATVI for obvious reasons. Okay, but if I'm willing to pay for some time, I'm patient, maybe peace in, then I would look to something like an EA, where even if I don't catch the bottom, if I have enough time, this possibly can be a home run level, right? If EA regains its footing down the line. So that's the way I would look at it. And, and that's what we're seeing in the flow as well. We're seeing that in the flow. You know, anything coming into these names that have been selling all have a lot of, a decent amount of time, all. There may be some spec action around it, shorter dated, but for the most part, they all have, you know, a good amount of time behind them. All right. And, you know, I, there's an appeal there, obviously. You know, there's an appeal there. These things have been battered, battered. I mean, you look at some of these gambling stocks, you know, they haven't had even a legitimate squeeze yet in so long. Yeah, so that's why they're appealing. But it it doesn't come easy, unfortunately. It doesn't come easy. So we saw today, we saw again, um, basically both facets of this market, okay? We saw some repeat blood buying in FCAU, okay, some January buying. Uh, there was some Friday. The stock immediately right, right off the open got hit with selling, was red, and they came in probably even more aggressive today than Friday. Does the stop, stop, stop going low from here? Who the hell knows? You know, who the hell knows? But again, that's why they went out to January with it. All right. So we saw that action and we saw a ton of the chase action. And the chase action today, if you found a way to day trade around it, could have been extremely profitable. All right. AMD, you guys don't need me to tell you what the hell's been going on there, floor wise. You know, you get. If you're capable of, you could get in the middle of, of that Uzi type action in the in the middle of the day, especially on any little breathers. Like I give you an example of what I really want to get better at that I just, I don't know, for some reason, it's just not my game. All right. But here's an example of what you've heard me say in the past. Okay. Square. Okay. I know the chase is on in square, right? I know the chase is on. I know... Sweepers have been supporting every dip in the name. All right. So today I'm looking for a dip, right? A little bit of a breather. And I want to see sweepers support that breather. Okay. So in square, what happened was uh, the stock was up minimal, was flat. Then you had this breather here. Okay. Legitimate breather, right? And into this breather, we saw call sweepers hit it like a good three, four, or five times. It wasn't initial activity. Okay, Square has caught a gazillion sweeps by now. All right, but again, I'm making the play that chase is on. The chase is on. And I got a legitimate breather in this. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen as much as we would like. Okay, AMD hardly, I think there was one on the whole session. And they hit it a couple of times. So the way I play it is that this thing is going to go back and test those highs again. I make a long story short. I took that trade and she ended up rattling another two bucks on top of that, if not more. All right. But that again, that, that doesn't usually happen. That's how vicious this chase is right now. All right. So when you see these names red and you see action come in them, for a trade, if you're looking for something short-term, that's the play there. 
That's the play. All right, until the music stops. And then we can focus on all the laggards. Hopefully the money rotates into some of that stuff. I can't see a lengthy period of time that it doesn't unless we're on the verge of the Great Depression here. All right, but right now that's where the quick money is. It's not in Facebook. It's not in Facebook. You know, as much as you're used to it being there, you know, Facebook is tough right now. They're selling in Facebook. You know, as opposed to, right, Amazon, you know, a lot easier. And there, if you pay attention to the flow, there's a lot of names that have been hit like this. Okay, again, it's not my cup of tea chasing these things for a position. I really don't have an interest in it. I, I can't keep an eye on my swing account as aggressively as I would need to. Okay, me, I like to swing stuff with time, you know, so I, I can be patient with it. I don't have to worry about missing my window of exit. I'm looking for a decent risk reward, and I like to day trade all the heat. But if your game is to swing trade, you know, flip trade, whatever label you want to put on it, you know, this is the stuff you want to look at. Buying buying the stuff that has a ton of selling right now. That's the last place you want to look for that quick trade type thing. The last place. You want to look when these things aren't up as much. Maybe you got some weakness like this morning. You know, the, the weakness in some of these things this morning, it, it was like a mirage. It lasted a second. You know, Square was up. It wasn't even down Square when I played. It was up like 30-something cents. As soon as I got out of it, before you blink, it's up three bucks. You know, so that, that's, that's what you want to focus on. That's where the money is easier for that quick trade. All right. And again, you guys know the names. I mean, Roku, we've been talking about this, you know, the flow here and this explosion for a while now. You know, this is this is a chase name right now. This is a chase performance name, you know. All the stuff that looks like this, you know, how many software names and and tech names that look like this? What else did we see? We saw so many of them today. I can't even keep track. Oh, this one, I couldn't believe my eyes on this chart, Twilio. When the hell did this happen like this? Wasn't this Twilio a disaster at one point? Yeah, look at this. You know, and now up here, running like a banshee. You know, even even names that really haven't scores, but like a PayPal has been strong. You know, oh, another name we saw action again in today, Match. You guys see this Match.com? IAC, which is the parent company of Match. You know, that, the point I'm trying to make is this is where the momentum's at. You know, this is where the momentum's at currently. It's not going to be there forever. But this is the stuff you're looking to be quick with. I, I don't, me personally, okay, I'm not looking to build or piece into a position in square up here now. You know, that's not what I want to do. I want to take advantage of the momentum, the sweeper support in the name, right? We talk about CRM all the time too. You know, you see a sweeper into weakness. I think CRM was down today at one point. Unfortunately, I, I didn't see any action there, I don't think. But, you know, these are the type of names you see red. You know, if you want to be quick, that's that's where the juice is. All right. And like I said, what I'm hoping, it, it's hard. The, every This market, you know, I say it all the time, is different than any market I've ever been a part, you have so many different things. You have tariffs, trade wars, and you know, somebody made the point to me over the weekend and said, you know, it's always something. It's always something different. 
right? Amazon, the retail sector is always a different excuse, but things are just quicker now. You know, they happen faster. And that's why you get charts that look like this. Yeah, you had the uh, the weed stocks, had juice, right? But, you know, as we were saying, remember with like the cron action, and a lot of times I'm wrong, guys, but on a risk-reward basis, you don't want to build a position in cron up here. Yeah, you want to trade it. You want to trade it. All right, but uh, my point I was making, what I'm hoping for is eventually when these things finally do get tired, okay, and what we're going to keep an eye on, I told you guys, is this indicator. Once we see hedge funds now showing exposure, uh, that's when you'll probably see these things start to really fizzle out. Uh, it, again, January was the last time we saw this happen. Um, but keep in mind, January, when this happened back in January, like I said, it was a bigger chunk of the market. If I remember correctly, it was the transportation names. It was the tech names. I don't know, were the financials involved? The financials were probably involved. You know, now it's different that, you know, it's the squares of the world. Uh, here's another, I don't know if I mentioned this name too. Here's another name. Oh, I think I mentioned it, right? SFIX. I know this thing. Went bonkers already. Bonkers. All right, so you keep an eye on these uh, every day. Um, aside from that, I mentioned we got the best action uh, on the day, okay? I'm not talking about chase action. I'm talking about quality-wise. Like it was that Chrysler, FCAU, uh, more Jan action. And you had some interesting action in this tech, T-E-C-K. Um, I actually day traded it. Uh, didn't do much for me. T-E-C-K. Sort of grinded, floated higher in slow motion. Just no, not much juice there, you know? Not much juice. Uh, but this T-E-C-K uh, caught some legitimate November buying. Uh, I had really no intentions of trading it, but then some smaller action came into weeklies which i felt might give it a boost but it didn't honestly it didn't give it much it didn't give it much all right but some decent volume on a november line in this tck and this is exactly what we're talking about like look at this this is death right here you know gap down to a new recent low there's just a ton of selling in these things and the longer these things laid down here i gotta believe the bigger and the more action we're gonna see come into it and these guys they don't care you know they don't care if they're early we see them all the time they roll down strikes add more money add wood so they get a decent delta out of the bet yeah, they they don't care they don't care okay they're they're making a bet that there's a lot of big things being mispriced out there and it's a matter of time. That's all it is in their eyes. All right, it's a matter of time. Uh, that's the mark stuff, the mark uh, exhaustion, and and you see it in the demark stuff too. You know, a, a recent market, a uh, recent, a decent market. Okay, you get a quality name, you see some action, and she posts a green nine. You see some sort of bottom trying to form there all right because that's you know that's how they they like to buy these things or selling like that but the selling's been so strong that they just you know some of these things they just like it doesn't even exist it doesn't even exist and i know it sounds like a broken record because it's almost like i got it's it's like it was i feel like it was yesterday in retail in the retail sector it's exactly what happened in retail. Felt like there was never a bottom. Never, you know, these things were going out of business. That's how crazy the selling was. And then ultimately, when you stop paying attention, that's when, you know, things started to bottom, had a little rally, and little by little started to claw their way back. I remember like Macy's, you know, Macy's, I used to day trade or sweeper activity, and I, 
I was I couldn't make a freaking dollar off the action there. You know, that's how horrible the selling was. You guys remember this. You know, and then little by little by little, she claws her way back. Um, what was the name today? Oh, here's another name that had that type of action. Now is a chase. Can you believe it? SeaWorld, Shamu. Shamu. You guys probably remember every time we would see a sweep in this thing. It was into the lows. She just ended up going lower. And, you know, there'd be a little pop and then just the next couple of days roll over to new lows. More action, pop, roll over to new lows. You know, it's almost like as soon as you give up trying on those names and you stop looking, that's when, you know, out of nowhere, look at this rally in SeaWorld. You know, look at this world. That's why the big action, even, and I, this was a, a great point from um, one of the members of the Steam Room who said, it's even with the big, it doesn't mean you have to buy it right away. You see big action come into blood, keep an eye on it. You know, the problem is a lot of us, and I do it too, okay, because I don't swing trade as much as you guys, but a lot of us, we see action in it. If we have trouble making any money over the short term, extreme short term, we just forget it, right? We put the name on the back burner and we never look at it again. And then stuff like this and this happens without you even knowing what the hell went on. FDC, good old FDC, right? People are bragging about how strong the name is now. When that thing caught blood buying, there wasn't a bounce in sight in this FDC. Not a bounce in sight. So, you know, we call it blood buying for a reason. And listen, in different market conditions, sometimes it gets a little bit easier. But you got, you got crashes in some markets out there, right? China, what's going on in emerging markets, China, Brazil, we're beyond correction at this point. So you got to understand it's a different environment. Yeah, you got to, and it's not only about having coconuts, Ani, it's got to be something you're interested in. You know what I mean? It's got to be something you're interested in. Even if you're buying, you know, smaller amounts so you don't have to stress over it and you're giving it enough time, you just, you have to have that plan if you're going to try to get involved in these things. You got to have that plan. If they don't take as long as you expected, fantastic. You know, that's a bonus, but you got to have that plan. You can't look at these things over the next couple of days after you buy them and stress because they keep going lower. Just because you bought them doesn't mean they're going to stop going lower. You know, and, and then again, if it's not your cup of tea, then you should be looking elsewhere. Okay. You should be looking elsewhere. And right now you either got that or the chase. Right? It seems like there's no in-between right now. That's the tough part of this market. There's no in-between. You either got what's considered blood buying, or you got action in things that look like this, where you say to yourself, your risk-reward is not that favorable up here. But you got to adapt to that environment, right? If you're not interested in the blood buying, then you got to look to be quicker and more selective you know, to get through this period until you see action that suits you best. You can't you can't force something. My point I'm making, you can't force something, you know, out of action just to fit your needs and expect it to work out that way. You can't do it. You can't do it. All right. So um, what else? Anybody have any questions of what's going on uh, in some names here? Anybody interested uh, or see anything interesting in some names? Yeah, SGMS. I mean, that's a perfect example there. That SGMS looks like IGT, looks like every casino and gambling related stock out there. The whole basket, every single one of them. Right? I'm sure IGT got hit over the head today. I'd be shocked if it didn't. The same thing. 
Same exact thing. Yeah, some may be worse than others. Some might have smaller floats and move around more. You know, it's but they're all in that same category. The casinos, right? All the China-related Macau stuff. Macau supposedly there was good numbers over the weekend. Yeah, boom, hit over the head again. Yeah, they and and exactly to my point, they bought more leaps again today in SGMS because this this means nothing if you're buying Jan 2020 leaps, okay, and you're building a position in it. You want this to happen. I know it sounds ridiculous, but you want this to happen, okay? Otherwise, you wouldn't have bought Jan 2020 leaps, right? Makes sense. They want this. They want this to go on, right? They want it at the least to hang around down here or some selling so they can add to their positions. But, you know, if you're looking at SGMS here, and trust me, it looks like crap. I'm not going to lie to you and say it looks good. But if you're interested in buying leaps and you're looking at SGMS and think something good is going to come out of this chart, then the opportunity is not there anymore. All right? Now, listen, you could say, oh, you know what? I want to wait to see maybe if I see signs of a bottom there. And I'm going to, you know, play it out, take my time and do Listen, more to you. That's a strategy in itself. I'm sure you're going to miss some opportunities, okay? Because sometimes they catch news. Sometimes they gap up. Sometimes they squeeze you don't want to chase. And before you know it, you're paying higher than this level anyway. But if that's how you feel most comfortable doing it that way, then so be it. You know, then so be it. Yeah, Baba, you know, this is China. Uh, every Look at every Chinese name. Is there, maybe there's one or two Chinese names that are outperforming out there? Yeah, maybe, I don't know. But from what I see, you know, IQ, right? Every time she has a little rally, she flattens out. It's just, you could see there's a lot of selling pressure still in all this stuff. Now, maybe it's the, the trade war stuff probably has a lot to do with it. Other reasons, God only knows. I'm tired of trying to figure out the reasons because, like, look at retail. Okay, right? What was the reason behind that retail, that barrage of selling in retail? Amazon? And look how that played out. Amazon didn't end up putting anybody out of business. So for me, you know, I don't really like to pay too too much attention to the reasons. If I see some decent size action, you know, some solid buying coming in with time, you know, that's all I need to see. And then I want to work it according to my plan as far as the sizing, maybe piecing in and all that stuff. Uh, GBT, no, we haven't seen any recent action there. I saw a uh, one position roll, but we haven't seen any um, since the stock has rallied here. We saw a little bit into the lows. You remember uh, that big reversal day here where it was red and green. Uh, we have seen, I know, Anna, you like the SGMO and stuff like that. We've been seeing action, which you're probably aware of. SGMO, we saw a little more action there today. Um, uh, this is not Biotech TRXC. They've been buying that. The robotics name, she's been strong. Trying to think, a lot of small biotechs uh, here and there have been seeing action. You know, that Mankind, which was up big today, had some action. That was a gap up. September 5th data, SGMO. Yeah, I remember you telling me that. So they're playing for that. Maybe it, there'll be a run up. Well, they're, she's running a little bit into it anyway here. So that's coming up now, right? September 5th, that's here now. Um, what else we got? What about some other tech names? Anybody see uh, other tech names? Some aren't as extended as others. 
you know, like this RHT had a little bit of action. You got earnings coming up, though. All right, there's always an excuse with some of the some of these names that really haven't run yet. There's always something in the way. A uh, Google, they bought big calls. I don't remember. Maybe a block. I don't remember any. Oh, it could have been a block, right? I don't remember a sweeper, but you could be right. It was a block. I don't remember all the blocks, unfortunately. I remember the uh, I remember the sweeps, but you know if it's not a sweep, especially in these names, I'm not paying attention to it. Amazon had a little sweep this morning. Uh, Pablo saying have to set goals and manage when you only buy one or two hours. Example: FCA use they recently bought the 19 to 2022 calls. A lot of action, which should be my goal. Operate buying only one or two hours is very complicated. If they take profits fast. It's about, Pablo, it's about, and I know it sounds easier than it is. It's just about having a, a plan and then you going according to your plan and nothing else, okay? So here's what I would recommend. You see FCAU and they come in and they're buying Jan calls, okay? That's all the information you need to know now from the flow, okay? The flow is telling us, that somebody feels down here, this name with some time out into early next year is a de decent risk reward setup. Okay. You like it. You're targeting Jan. All right. And you have to have a plan there. Okay. You have to have a plan. In other words, what, how much premium am I risking? And what am I looking for upside? Okay, because that risk reward has got to be worth it for you. You can't buy FCAU Jan calls and flip them, okay, and then tomorrow you buy XYZ Jan calls and you write them down to zero, right? Your losers are going to outsize all your winners playing that way. So there's got to be a there's got to be a plan there. You got to have an idea of what you're doing before you even hit the buttons. See, like for me, the reason why I feel better swinging names like an FCAU out in January, I don't have to be quick to sell them. I'm looking for that better risk reward. All right, so I can be patient. The, all the other stuff, you know, all the high momentum, hot action type stuff, I'm okay just day trading if the opportunity is there. I'm not going to make as much money, obviously, but I'm okay with that. So I'm day trading off the hot action, right, in the high momentum names, and I'm looking to buy pullbacks that see action with time for a better risk reward. So that's that's my that's my plan. You know, so it's not adding confusion into the mix. You know, oh, FCA use up today. I got to sell it, take it off the table quick. You know what I mean? I don't need that added stress. You know, especially me, I have a quick trigger finger. I'll sell anything that I see green. You know, that's how I am. But if I have a plan in place before I even think about, before I even know what names I'm buying, you know, I have an idea of what the hell I'm looking for, what I'm risking, and the reward I'm looking for is worth taking that risk. That's the way I look at it anyway. You know, but again, everybody's different. If that longer term stuff is not for you, I don't think you should force it, especially if you're finding success elsewhere, you know. You just you gotta understand one thing, especially with options. All right. If you're looking to sell profits quick then somehow, some way, you have to take losses just as quick. You can't ride your losers down and get preened out, and then you're flipping gains on your winners, right? You could you could have five winners, five losers, and you're getting hit over the head with losses with that, with that strategy. So you generally, 
your reward is got to be at the least what you risk, in my opinion, at the least. So if you're risking, again, example, you're risking a dollar on the calls, you're looking for at least a dollar upside on those calls. Otherwise, it's not worth it. You know, and on the flip side, like day trading, I, I feel more comfortable dating, day dating, <laughs> dating. I feel more comfortable day trading the equity for that reason. You know, if I'm buying square, all right, and I'm buying stock, if I'm willing to risk 75 cents to the downside, I'm looking for 75 cents to the upside at the least. You know, so this way I know that. Let's say over the course of a month of my day trading, if I have, I don't know, 30 winners and 25 losers, I'm still going to be green, flat at the least. So, yeah, I think that's, you know, it's one of the most important things. You got to have some sort of game plan there because I, I don't care what type of source you're getting your ideas from if there's no strategy like that in place if you don't have an idea of what what you're looking for on a risk reward basis you know you're destined to fail there so that's that's where i would start pablo that's where i would start you know and you go from this like exactly what i told you you risking a, a dollar those calls are costing you you know you at the least have to believe you're going to see a dollar in upside there. Anything less than that is not worth it for you. Oh uh, yeah, Facebook. We saw uh, some size block put action for the week, but that's because you got the uh, testimony. So most likely protection sim um, into that. You know, we kind of last time we saw um, some put action in Facebook uh, when Zuckerberg was uh, getting in front of Congress. And then, um, if you remember, there was one actually decent missile that came in the day of on the call side. So we'll see if, if that happens this go around. Uh, but it doesn't surprise me we see some put buying, you know, this week there protecting. You know, the put action, put action, it's mostly block protection from what I see. I'm not seeing any super aggressive put action out there. You know, I'm not seeing any uh, super aggressive put action out there. Um, it mostly looks protective. Uh, but like I said, you know, on the call side, uh, the aggressive buying um, has been, you know, in, in the hot momentum names. Otherwise, a lot of, a lot of big bets with time behind them. A lot of big bets with time behind them. Yeah, airlines have been solid. You know, they're almost in the chase category as well now. You look at some of the rallies there. LUV. Uh, they pumped it up on CNBC as well. You know, you got a pretty decent rally. You know, you got a pretty decent rally there. Uh, AAL, they're... There was some real nice size buying out in January, February, a couple of weeks back. Most of it with time. Delta uh, caught a pretty big sweep, if you guys remember. DAL, a couple of you guys traded it. Uh, UAL also, some flow there. She's been pretty strong. Yeah, the airlines have been in decent. What's going on? Oh, here we go. The airlines have been in uh, decent shape. We saw a little bit of unusual activity in SPR today. That's Spirit Airline, which looks a little different than the rest. See, she hasn't really moved yet. Uh, it was an unusual block buyer in SPR. AAXN, what is that? Is that the old Taser? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I haven't seen action in this thing in a while. We saw one, um, there was a round of big, like, leap buying in this AAXN. She's looking good. Well, nothing recently, Joey, though. Yeah, Home Depot looks good. 
there's been smaller action there that in lows. Uh, no, nothing really good looking, but you know, price action looks good. Price action looks good. Home Depot doesn't catch a lot of action. Lowe's usually will catch more action than a Home Depot. Uh, what else? What other names? I like talking to you guys about what names maybe you see action in that you find interesting. Anything else showing some momentum? You know, we talk about the um, software names. All of them that ZS had a little bit of a pull recently. Uh, today, nice reversal, red to green. I didn't see any action there though today. Uh, PVTL, they're going to have earnings coming up. I don't know why my charts are so slow. She, she's doing the uh, grind there, PVTL. Yeah, PSTG earnings screw that one up. That That's the other thing that was the kick in the face recently earnings got in a lot you know got in our way a lot again roku i think is one of the biggest oh the biggest uh names action wise that earnings screwed us you know but roku action again today Oh, action again today. And she had a little bit of a pullback. There was some news. Wasn't there news in Roku? I think it was Amazon News again, if you can believe that. Amazon News again, this pullback. And they're buying it again. SUM, yeah, November. They, I mean, they're cheap, um, but they did okay the last go around. It's worth a shot if you like the name, Pablo. They're cheap. Right, what were they? 35 cents, 40 cents. Uh, they did it here, I think it was. And then they caught this rally, the calls doubled, and then she fell on her face again. Um, but same type action. Cheap calls, nice volume. Yeah, she looks like she's trying to form a bottom here. Yeah, maybe a rally comes into these things in the neck of time. You can't. I don't know. This, there's got to be some sort of short squeeze in these things eventually. We'll see. Maybe the action will give us a heads up. You know, maybe we'll see some shorter dated action that comes into this stuff. Maybe it'll give us a heads up. Um, but right now, it's all, you know, all dated. All dated. And what I mean by that is, let's say, like, let's just take SUM, for example. If we see, well, now we're in, what, September? But if we see September or October... Uh, call sweepers, there's no weeklies in these, but weeklies, bi-weeklies, if it trades them, you know, then you can even trade these names. You know, a lot of you a lot of you probably remember, I like to trade the squeeze names off that type of action, right? When they're flat, sitting there trying to form a bottom, and then that action comes in, and you're looking for that pop, that short squeeze. But we're not seeing that. All the action we're seeing in these things for the most part, have a lot of time behind them. And to me, again, it's, I don't know for sure, but my impression when I'm seeing that type of action across the board, it tells me even they're worried that they may be early. You understand? Like when the win is catching size, all the size of win is out, in April, March, June of next year, you know, and for good reason, they're even concerned that they're probably too early on these names. And, you know, this could be the process of these guys forming a bottom. I mean, these, these casino and gambling stocks, they're, they're trading like we're entering the Great Depression. <laughs> That's what they're trading like. You remember how hot these things were? going into the approval of legalized gambling. Do you remember how hot these things were? It wasn't that long ago. And now, you know, whether it's a China slowdown or whatever the hell it is, it's, they're acting, you know, they're, they're, it looks like they're pricing in not a recession, a depression. That's what it looks like. 
You know, what a CME, we saw some action there, CME. You know what uh, other one we saw literally was small action, ICE today. Both of them been pretty strong. Coop, did they announce? Did they come out with earnings yet? They got earnings, right? Were they done? Oh, no way, Gary. Plus nine. Oh, my God. Wow. Plus nine? Wow. You see what I mean with these things? These these software names and tech names, earnings? They make you hold through if you want to get rewarded. Plus nine? They don't even gave, gave you a chance to chase a little gap up. And you know what's funny? She do, she was grinding higher, but it wasn't a, you know what I mean? They didn't want to give you too much pre-earnings. Look at this. You know, it's a decent rally, though. They opened up the largest position of open interest in this coop. They're going to get paid nicely. So, and these things are all in vogue. Now we'll probably see these things hot again tomorrow, right? You got to believe? There's there's a laundry list of them, guys. Small, big, uh, UIS. That was a, a small one. I don't know if you guys remember. Look at this. UIS, ZS, PVTL, HDP. You guys know that one we've been talking about for a bit. Uh, was down a little bit yesterday, uh, today. Bounced off the lows. You know, so you got to look towards these into weakness for some opportunities. Yeah, Darmesh, we spoke about SFIX. Ridiculous action. Ridiculous. You know, listen, if you're in it now from the starting point here, that's fine. You don't want to chase these things up here for a swing now. You know, you want to, you want a day of weakness or a pullback. When you see action, you're looking for a trade. You don't want to start building a position up here now. You know, you're a little late. You're a little late. But this, I was giving the example earlier, you see weakness and you see some action in, you're looking for a trade, you know, or you see a pullback, you see some action in, you're looking for a trade because they're supporting these things. MDB, that's another one, right, Gordon? That's another one. I remember that. Yeah, 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 MDB. Darmesh, I'd probably wait for a, a pullback in SFIX. You're saying take some of the profits off your calls and put it into the stock? Or why don't you why don't you just roll up and roll out some of the calls? That's what I would do, Darmesh. You know what I mean? I would go out further in time. I would go out further up in strikes and use my profits for that. That's what I would do. A smaller piece of the profits, obviously. And then if you get a pullback, then you can figure out if you want to ante up. Yeah, this MDB is another one, Gordon. Wow. Isn't it amazing, some of these things? Amazing. We were talking about that hubs, H U B S. You know, these some of these stocks, they're 150 bucks. Nobody even knows they exist. Look at this hubs. Craziness. So yeah. So listen, again, we got action. You want to be quick, you want to be tactical, day trading, short-term trading. Yeah, you just want to be quicker. You don't want to try to hit home runs, even though it's appealing, right? You see these things go up every single day. From here, you don't want to get too, too greedy in the upside. You want to, you want to take advantage of the momentum? Exactly. You don't want to start chasing up here now after uh, 20 straight up days. 
you want to you want to take advantage of the short term momentum in these things. All right, but the place on the on the long side, the big money from here is going to be made off things that aren't doing a thing right now. Over time, that's where the big money is going to be made. It's a it's a matter of when, you know, it's just a matter of when. So you want to be quick in these things, you know, try to take advantage of pullbacks and stuff like that. And you want to keep your eyes on, you know, some of the other stuff that's catching the real action out there and look awful. You know, and we always, the as a retail trader, we have a tendency, right, to always, like we see SFIX, it catches action and it's exploding. Or we see Square, that's a better example, seeing a lot smaller action and she's up every day. You know, but the bigger action in an FCAU, we ignore because, you know, she's not reacting over the short term. But I'm telling you from experience, you know, the home runs are usually from here. You know, the home runs on the square, if you remember, again, the square, the pullback we were all talking about was back here when nobody was even talking about the stock. You had... You know, real, real action in Square. I don't know if you guys remember the July's expired, but they were tattooing July calls earlier in the year off a of pull. Tattooing. Yeah, that's when Square was catching the real deal action. Now they're just chasing. This is just a chase. Yeah, D T R R X C um, has had nice action. And she's doing her thing. Visa, that's another animal. My goodness. MasterCard looks the same way. So you see what I'm talking about? Though? That's what gives me hope. Uh, and that, that keeps me, because don't get me wrong. When I see charts like this, like the AMD and stuff, I get worried. You know me, okay? But for every AMD, you know, there's an SGMS out there or a CAT or any of these names that haven't done anything. So there's a good possibility, a better possibility that when the music stops for a square and an AMD, they could rotate into some of that other stuff. We did not have that luxury in January. You understand? We didn't have that luxury in January. January, everything was raging. Everything. From Boeing to Fang, remember? Everything. So that's what keeps me uh, positive here. All right? So look for the chase to continue. Um, you know, If you're in the room, whatever, I'll be talking about uh, the hedge fund chart as a whole, uh, keeping us abreast of things and see once we see the hedge fund exposure start to react, uh, that's when, you know, might be an indication these things might um, run out of gas a bit. All right. Overall sentiment, you know, we got a little hot as expected into the highs, but we've cooled off here. And before you know, we got um, sentiment in our favor. At the lows today, the squeezometer was in the 30s again, just like that. So it doesn't take much. All right. So again, you know, weakness is the opportunity, I think, for anything out there, whether you like playing the strength or whether you're looking to buy the weakness. You know, you're looking for weakness as an opportunity here. Uh, yeah, Delta had some nice action. Delta had some nice action. Honestly, Thomas, they all did. Delta, um, LUV, the action there has been solid. Uh, AAL a little further out, January, February, but AAL caught a lot of size. All of them. UAL, the whole the whole group, pretty much the whole group. So I mean, if you like the space, I would recommend. Picking your favorite one. 
They've been playing the whole group. All right, guys. Always a pleasure. All right. Good luck out there. And like I said, check on my uh, on my Twitter. Uh, those of you in the room, I keep you tabs on everything anyway. All right. Good luck, everybody. Thanks for stopping by. I'll talk to you guys soon.